Chris with HobbyKing.com and we're going to do a quick overview on the Quantum Nova plug and play. What we're going to do in this uh, short tutorial is open it up and show you what you get when you receive the plug and play, how to connect it to your transmitter and receiver and go into uh, the computer software and we'll be able to verify the settings and the transmitter uh, flight mode switches uh, as well as those are assignable. So let's go ahead and get into it. First thing you'll notice, I've got the Quantum Nova and this is how it comes out of the box in the plug and play version. You've got your props and your landing gear is all separate from it uh, and the, the Quantum Nova itself. All right, so the first thing we need to do is go ahead and pop the dome on the compass. This has an external compass which allows the uh, compass to be mounted high and away from uh, possible sources of interference such as power distribution board, uh, power lines, etc. So all you got to do is just grab the top of it and lift up and it pops right on open. The, uh, the compass is located right in here. Now this is a pre-production sample, so the, uh, the, the ones that are being shipped to you will have a little band over on top of the compass uh, to hold it into place. Don't worry about that on this one. All we're really concerned with is this little plug that is shown right here. What you need to do is just quickly pop it off and relieve the, uh, the cable from the compass itself. We can just set this aside. Next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and roll it over. And we've got some screws uh, along here that we just need to, uh, to take loose and we'll be able to remove the top housing. You do not need to remove the motor screws, only the lower arm screws that freeze the upper housing from that. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, let's talk about the screws real quick. On the bottom, there are a total of six inboard screws and four outboard screws. Those just need to be removed, set them in a safe place so they don't get lost, and there's one hidden screw in the battery compartment. Go ahead and pop this open, and it's located right there. You'll be able to spot it right away. Now, once you're done with that, go ahead and roll it over, and uh, some of these screws didn't all fall out, so I don't want to make sure, I'm, I don't, I want to make sure I don't lose any. So I'm just gonna tap it and catch any extra screws and go ahead and lift the upper cover of the Nova off. Remember, your, your uh, compass module is still in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just set this to the side. Now, this is the cable right here that we just unplugged from our I2C port, which is for our external compass. I'm just gonna go ahead and lay that to the side. Uh, there's a couple zip ties that hold this wire loom in. I'm gonna go ahead and just clip those real quick so that uh, we'll be able to get a clear understanding of these wires uh, and how they're laid. So I've got some side cutters. and I'm gonna just go ahead and move these out. Now, when you take a look at uh, the loom of wires that are right in here, these are what's gonna be going to the receiver, and it might seem a bit overwhelming, but it absolutely is not. We're gonna go through these one by one. There are three total options of being able to connect your receiver into the flight controller. Uh, there's a, a method uh, called PPM, and we'll talk about that first. It's kind of more of an advanced method. If you understand what PPM is, uh, then great. Uh, you'll definitely appreciate this. If you don't, skip past this part and move, uh, move to the next one. The next one is that we're gonna talk about utilizing uh, servo extensions just on their side and transferring signal only and not, uh, and not the positive and negative for all the servo leads. This is great, but you run into a little bit of an issue with, uh, you have to have a computer radio that has reassignable channels. And we'll talk about that. And then the last method is just the, I'm gonna call it the stupid simple, easy to use, one for one, plug it in, you're gonna be successful with, uh, with the, uh, the multi-rotor. The uh, problem with this is, is that it does use one additional cable, so you will need, for this uh, method, uh, a single servo extension uh, in addition to what comes into the multi-rotor. But this method, it's pretty much anyone can be successful with it and plug it in and use. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the first method and the flight controller. I've got the pinout of the Quantum Nova flight controller up here, and if we take a look at this upper label, it matches this label right up here. So the first method I talked about was PPM. And if we uh, bridge uh, what is channel one and two, you're able to use channel three for PPM input. So this, uh, the way that it, this is laid out is L run elevator throttle rudder, uh, one, two, three, four, which actually correlates to input five, six, seven, and eight. So it has eight inputs available on this. Now these two right here are your GPS and LED. And unlike a conventional receiver where everything runs up and down, these are actually laid on their side and run horizontal. So we're gonna actually box these out and ignore them on the side of your receiver. So they're normally like that, don't worry about it. We're just gonna X those on out. Uh, and those are already plugged in so you don't need to worry about it. 
Okay, so from this side, if you want to do PPM uh, input, and uh, I'm not going to dive into PPM. If you know what I'm uh, talking about, great, you'll be able to utilize this. So what we need to do is bridge these two right here. So what you need to do is jumper it, and just get yourself like a, a, a jumper from an old computer uh, board and bridge these two, one and two, and then you're going to use your single PPM line to your RX. And from that point, you're going to be able to do uh, PPM input to the flight controller. All right, now the next method is how the Nova is uh, shipped right out of the box. And uh, I'm going to explain this. If you don't quite understand it, don't worry about it. Shift to the very last one, which is just the simple install. And uh, I'm just going to explain a little bit on this. And what, what the main difference is, is that instead of using a standard servo lead, which runs vertical like you're plugging into a servo on a receiver. And since this is a plug and play, we are assuming that you're familiar with RC devices, RC receivers, uh, and how servos plug in. You've got positive, negative, and signal. So to a degree, we're, we are assuming that you understand this, but I'm going to go ahead and explain it. So out of this, uh, normally on receivers across, positive and negative are, are a common bridge, meaning that you could plug, plug in your... Um, ESC into your throttle channel and it's going to provide power for your servos on that common bridge. But since it is a common bridge, there's no need to run uh, power negative across the uh, all, all, all leads. So what they did was take a servo wire and turn it sideways. So in this case, this bridge all the way across is your input rail. Only one needs to be vertical and what that does is provide power into the flight controller from the receiver since the receiver has power input on it via the BEC. And we're gonna talk about those wires right there. So we're getting positive and negative, it's feeding the bridge and everything beyond that. And so at that point, we only need the servo, uh, the signal wires coming out of it. The reason we wanna do that is it reduces the number of wires. Right there, we're gonna kill six additional wires, which obviously is weight and trying to get them all in there nice and tidy would be a little bit more difficult. All we need is the signal. But with that, you have to correlate to the receiver and turn it sideways. And on the, uh, the orange uh, 615, it's clearly marked signal is high, which is normally your white or yellow wire. And uh, you're gonna turn it and plug it in sideways on this. But to utilize this option, you need to have a computer radio that has the ability to reassign channels. Because a Futaba receiver, channel one might be throttle, and on a Spectrum receiver, channel one might be uh, Elron. And, 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 and don't quote me on that. I'm just saying they're definitely different channel orders for different manufacturers. So the problem with that is, is if you take a servo lead and plug it in here and expect to plug it into your receiver, and uh, Elron be channel one and Elron two be, or uh, throttle being channel three, et cetera, it might not line up. Now the easy fix for that is to go ahead and take your servo lead. It's very simple to use a, uh, a razor blade and just lift up the tab, slide them out and rechange the pins on that and line it up to the way that you need it if you don't have a computer radio. But if you have a computer radio such as a 9XR or a Tyrannus or, or some other brands, you can easily reassign what channel does what uh, uh, to match that. And that's the reason that it came this way. So we'll just take a look. So we got Elron, one has to be vertical, so we share positive and negative. We got uh, um, elevator, throttle, rudder, and then uh, number one is actually channel five input, which is our flight modes. Now, this uh, flight controller does support uh, um, up to eight inputs, which does other functions. We're not gonna get into that. That's definitely for the advanced user. If you're an advanced user, you're, you know already what an APM-based uh, flight controller is capable of doing as far as auxiliary inputs. Uh, so we're not gonna dive into that. This is just basic. So, uh, so we're just concerned with that one right there, which is uh, channel five and uh, your flight mode input. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this, the way it comes right out of the box, and that is how it, uh, it comes. It comes with uh, three servo leads, and this one is actually turned sideways on there as well. So we're gonna go ahead and plug Elron into Elron on your receiver, and then these three need to line up and correlate with the receiver itself, plugged in sideways and matched in there. And we're just gonna go one for one, and this being your aux channel on your transmitter, which needs to be either a, a three position switch or a programmable switch to achieve different flight modes. Now, a three position switch will give you three uh, flight modes, but more advanced computer radios can shift those and you can actually have up to six flight modes uh, depending on the type of transmitter that you have and your understanding of programming your transmitter. So uh, we'll get into that in a little bit later. So that is the second method and the way that it comes out of the box. All you really need to know is Elron Elevator Throttle Rudder that this is turned sideways and that's the third one. And it's fairly easy to take a look. If we take a look, I've already clipped the wire right in here. Here's your one vertical one. 
Here's our next one that is turned sideways and our third one that is turned sideways. And we can just take a look at the color and correlate that. Plug it in uh, pin for pin onto the receiver. And uh, the one that I wanted to take uh, a look at and explain to you is the power. Now the power distribution board in Innova um, actually has output for the receiver and flight controller. And if we take a look at towards the rear, which has the battery door for the, uh, the, uh, the battery on the back side, it is the one lead that is coming up and going forward onto the left side. And what this is, is the, the, the beak. Now the signal wire isn't connected to anything, like I said, it's just to provide power. So this lead is gonna go into your bind slash battery uh, port or any port on your receiver, and it's just gonna bridge and provide power out on that. So we've got that. Now the two other leads we're gonna take a look at, when this was in the, uh, the harness, there are uh, two additional leads, and if you take a look at it, they're really easily identifiable because the wire leads to them are about half the diameter of the, uh, the ones going to the flight controller, and they just come off to the right. And all these are are a servo extension to the bottom of the Nova, which allows you to plug in gimbal for pitch and roll control. Uh, so if you have those available uh, ports on your receiver, you can go ahead and plug into those and get those out right to the bottom. It makes a real nice, clean, and easy install with, uh, with those already being brought out for you. So these two are just servo extensions and pretty self-explanatory. The one coming up from the back is your power. And so we really only need to deal with these three, which give you a, a total of seven available inputs into the flight controller. Now, if you aren't uh, uh, planning on using these two inputs, or you have like a six channel uh, receiver, what you need to do is only make sure you plug in the one uh, on that. And it's real simple. All you gotta do is dike the other two. And dike, I mean by use side cutters or clip the other two uh, leads. So only one is being used as an input here. So that is the second way of uh, installing this. Let me go ahead and clean up the board and I'll explain the third way, which is just the simple way. If you don't really understand RC, but you always already had a radio and you wanted a plug and fly version, um, uh, this is the way that anyone can be successful at it. Uh, we'll be right back. All right, now the third method that we're gonna talk about is just the simple method. And this is the way that uh, the Quantum Novas, as far as the plug and play, uh, uh, are being produced now. Uh, definitely we assumed it's gonna be a lot easier and more easier to comprehend. Where this method is better because it uses less wires the way it's shipped right now. If you don't quite understand what I, what I mean by lining up Elrond to Elrond and, and changing those pins around, it could be a little confusing and frustrating to some. So if you understand that, great. If not, this is the method for you to be able to uh, uh, connect this up. And all we're gonna do is use these as a standard receiver, basically. We're gonna talk about this as being a uh, like a receiver and plugging one into one. So Elron uh, will simply plug into Elron on our uh, receiver, uh, elevator, throttle, rudder, and channel five being our flight mode switch. So it's just gonna be one for one. So in order to do that, I've already cut those zip ties and I moved these to the side. We have these three inputs that we already talked about. I'm going to unplug the last two. I'm gonna leave the single one that's uh, just vertical plugged in. And if we take a look at the flight controller, that is our Elron input. So I'll just take a look at our 615, find where it's clearly labeled Elron. On this, the S indicates signal, which on the wire will be the white or yellow, uh, depending on uh, uh, your type of receiver. So we'll go ahead and plug that into Elron. I'm gonna take one of the ones that we unplugged. I'm gonna plug it in right to the next port. And that is our elevator, and I'm just gonna plug that straight into elevator on our receiver. Take the other one that we unplugged. Do the same thing here. And that is our throttle. And I mentioned that we're gonna need additional, and this is for the, the last two. So uh, right here we've got rudder, and rudder. So those are our first four right here that are able to run vertical just like a, a standard receiver. One for one, they're vertically plugged in and they're all set. Okay, so this is our flight mode input right here and this is the one that we're, we're gonna talk about right now. You have no choice because these pins are occupied by the GPS and LED, you absolutely have to run a servo lead on its side. Um, so we're just going to look at a color. In this case, I'm going to just stick with the, uh, the yellow on this one uh, or the white or whatever your lead is, uh, just so it's easily uh, recognizable to me. And I'm going to make sure that pin is lined up here. So I'm just going to plug that in on its side. All 
All right, and then I'm gonna be able to plug it in here. Now, if you plug it into your receiver straight, you still have the, uh, the positive and the negative hooked up, which means you're then gonna be receiving uh, positive and negative over here on these two pins. This particular uh, controller was designed for this to happen. Uh, it is opto-isolated, so do not worry about it. But if you have the ability to have extra imp uh, inputs from your uh, receiver, say you have a nine channel receiver, you still will be able to utilize these as the inputs. What I'm gonna recommend to you to do, just to keep this super simple, is on this particular lead, since it's coming out, we know the, uh, the yellow wire I've connected right here, which is channel five. I don't wanna interfere with any of these other inputs. I'm going to go ahead and either just remove or clip the black and yellow leads, and this is gonna leave the, uh, the channels available on my receiver for the pitch control that we talked about earlier. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut those black and white wires. So we're simply using only one wire out of this uh, lead that I just put in to go right in here to our signal. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into my aux channel, which is my three position switch on the transmitter. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of these extensions and plug it into the other aux channel, which means that I will be able to utilize the gimbal uh, pitch control at a later point. Now, we had talked about on the back side that the power lead was coming up from the, the back of the quad where the others come in from the front of the quad. And so all we have to do is go ahead and plug that into our battery slash bind. And that's it. That is the, the simple and easy way to go ahead and plug this in and utilize it. So what we'll uh, do is before I um, uh, close this all up, what I'm going to do is tape these off just so we don't have any, any problems there. I'll put a little piece of two-sided tape and mount it right here next to the flight controller. I'm going to plug it into the computer and we're going to talk about Mission Planner, APM Planner. We're going to verify that uh, all the inputs are the correct inputs via the transmitter and take a look at the flight modes. We're going to go ahead and button this up and we'll take it for a test flight real quick. All right, so we're back and I have this all set up. First thing we're gonna talk about is the software. You can go ahead and download uh, several programs to be able to take a look and verify that our transmitter is plugged in and operating correctly to the Quantum Nova. Uh, uh, the one that I prefer and, and use and it's been around for a while is called Mission Planner. And if you uh, quickly just do a quick uh, search uh, on Google and just type in Mission Planner, uh, Mission Planner download will pop right up. You can also uh, utilize APM Planner 2.0. It's a little bit newer. Uh, however, I'm, I'm comfortable using a Mission Planner because it's been around uh, for a little bit and I'm just familiar with it. You can also use your Android tablets to take a look at this uh, with uh, some avail available downloads on that one as well. So. What I did was just uh, type in uh, Mission uh, Planner and uh, Download popped on up. If you just go ahead and click on this, you can see that we've got a couple different downloads. We've got APM Planner, Mission Planner. Just go ahead and click on this, and what you want to do is download this first. Because when this is uh, downloaded and you install it, what it's going to do is install the drivers for this flight controller, which is our Arduino-based. So it'll download those Arduino drivers so it'll be able to recognize when you go ahead and plug it in for the first time. So I already have it uh, downloaded uh, on my uh, computer, so I'm going to go ahead and just launch Mission Planner. Now, I want to talk about the software. It's extremely powerful, and there is a lot that you can do with this flight controller. Do not touch anything other than what we're gonna talk about uh, in this tutorial because you can easily mess up stuff and, and cause problems and, and I don't even wanna go into it. Bottom line, the more advanced users and as you get more familiar with this uh, multi-rotor, you can start diving into some of these other settings, join the forms, join the groups, and start understanding all the capabilities that this is uh, capable of doing. But as of right now, all we want to do is verify that our transmitter is plugged in correctly and we're gonna leave everything left alone. It uh, may even uh, say that there are updates. Do not update uh, at this point because everything is dialed and working on the multi-rotor as is out of the box. So we just wanna leave it alone, get out there, get some flying, get familiar with it, and then you can go in there and start playing with things and tuning it the way that you might uh, want it. Okay, so now that I got Mission Planner opened up, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and connect a quad. First thing we're gonna do is connect power, which is gonna go ahead and power up our flight controller. Uh, we're going to wait till we get the beeps. Okay, we have the beeps and uh, this is uh, uh, turned on. I'm going to go ahead and just plug in the USB on the bottom, which is going to connect this to our computer. I heard it connect. Uh, I already had the drivers installed on this one. So at this point, we can go ahead and uh, connect the two together. So if we look up here on the top, when we drop down, I always just use auto. Just click on auto and in the right, click connect. What it's going to do is uh, search all my uh, available COM ports, uh, find the mission uh, or the, uh, the flight controller, and go ahead and connect to that. All right, now that we're connected, 
like I said, it's gonna pop up on this one. It's saying there's an update available. Ignore it at this point. Just close out all updates. So on the screen, we got the artificial horizon. Um, if you got GPS lock, it'll pull it up on your screen. It'll show a bunch of cool things. Don't play with anything with this just yet unless you're familiar with it. All we're really concerned with, and, and disregard this bad compass health because the problem with the compass is it's unplugged. We have it in the upper uh, case, so obviously we're gonna have an error with that, but as soon as we plug it in, that will be gone. So we're, all we're really uh, concerned with is initial setup that's along the top. So I'm gonna click on initial setup, and we're gonna go to mandatory hardware. As we slide down, we're gonna see one that says radio calibration. This is where we need to be. Don't mess with anything else on this radio calibration. Now, it shows what would be sliders, but they're not lit up because I don't have my transmitter turned on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on, give it a second for it to bind. As soon as it, uh, as soon as it binds, uh, we're gonna have uh, sliders populate on the screen and it's gonna show us what's going on with our transmitter. All right, we just bound and we have the green sliders that pop on up. So what I'm gonna do is just move these around and make sure everything is correct. I'm gonna make sure throttle moves what's indicated as throttle on the screen. I'm gonna make sure uh, everything is good. Now the other one that we're gonna be concerned with is channel five or radio five, and this is our flight modes. So first thing I'm gonna do is just check my, uh, my roll, my yaw, make sure everything is good there, pitch, and everything is good. Now I have a three position switch, so I'm gonna uh, throw that. So we got high, medium, and low. Now that gives me three available flight modes. The more advanced users are gonna be able to go into their computer and do uh, mixes, which allows channel five to be in six different positions utilizing another switch as an offset. There's lots of information on how to do this with every type of radio out there. So just Google uh, your type of radio and, and utilizing it with uh, the APM software, and it'll show you how to go into your programming and set those options up. So you'll be able to get up to six available flight modes. All we're really concerned with at this point is three, to get you up in the air and flying and uh, start having some fun with the Quantum Nova. So now that we've verified everything is good, you wanna go ahead and do what's called a radio calibration. You're gonna click on this and it's gonna tell you to move all your sticks to their extents. So it says, uh, make sure it's turned on and connected. Uh, and then it says, okay, move all sticks and switches to their extreme positions until the red bars. So as I move sticks around, it's going to populate all of these and set those up and my three position switch. Then we're just gonna click when done. Make sure all your sticks are centered and the throttle is down and we're gonna click, okay. And it's just gonna throw up some numbers and tell us where our centers are and we're just gonna hit okay to that. And that's it, we're all set. We verify that every position on the transmitter matches what the computer is seeing here. So that means everything's good. We're, we uh, can verify that the direction is right. So when you take off, obviously, you don't push left and it goes right. It's right there on the screen. Now, the other one that we talked about was flight modes. It's gonna be one down from radio calibration and I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. Now, how this works is that the green bar indicates where it is at this, uh, at this point. So as I flip my flight mode switch, see the green is sliding up and down and that indicates what we are in our flight modes. So right now, uh, with the, uh, the way I have this switch uh, set up, I'm in loiter, in the center position, I'm in stabilized, and the last position, RTL, return to land. Uh, I'm actually quite happy with this uh, in, in loiter mode. Um, it's a position hold, the GPS hold, um, and in stabilize means that it's an auto level um, feature on this one, so it's uh, flying um, just like it would a normal quad, but it auto levels on you, and there's lots of other flight modes available, like I said, we're not gonna go into that. We're just talking about the basics that get you up in the air and, uh, and flying. So I'm okay with those uh, flight modes, but if I wanted to change one, say I wanted to have the stabilized and what's called simple mode where the yaw uh, orientation is, is disregarded, you could simply click this and then click save mode. But uh, unless you understand what these flight modes are, and there's uh, a lot of information in the wikis on, on these uh, various flight modes and what they all do, um, once you make any changes, and it also has a drop down that allows you to change these. So we're gonna keep those the same. You uh, just click save and it's gonna say complete. That's all I want you guys to do at this point. Verify that your flight modes are what you want them to be. You want stabilized, loiter, and return to home for the three position. If you're able to set up and get six, you can put in some of those other flight modes or even try the simple, uh, simple mode as well. Um, and uh, just make sure the radio calibration is done. We're pretty much set. What I'm gonna do at this point is just zip tie these wires up nice and tidy like it was. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little piece of foam on this receiver, put it down, 
and we're going to uh, put this back together and we'll give it a test flight. One thing I want you to, to take note is when you put the upper cover on, remember that you got to put this wire up through the top to the dome to the compass and we're going to go ahead and plug that on in. So uh, just give me a second, we'll go ahead and put this back together. All right, so now we are back to uh, how the Nova comes out of the, uh, the box. So I'm just going to go ahead and clear some of this uh, out of the way. And uh, we'll talk about uh, installing the landing gear. Pretty straightforward, uh, just goes right onto each side and comes with some thumb screws in the box. Those just go on, fairly straightforward. And the propellers uh, and nuts, we'll talk about those as well. This does use uh, clockwise and counterclockwise uh, nuts for the propellers. And what this allows you to do or uh, uh, stops uh, is that the natural rotation of the propeller doesn't try and take the nut or throw the nut off. So as it's spinning, it's always tightening itself up so, uh, so you don't have any issues with that. But because of that, you need to identify the, uh, the two nuts. And they're identifiable right here by being black and silver. I'll just finish this. Okay, there we go. As far as the props are concerned, if you take a look at the upper arms, it shows direction of rotation with a little arrow. So it's showing that these props go this way and these props are going this way. And if you take a look at your propellers, they have matching arrows on them that show direction. So all you really need to do is match those up side by side. And if you turn them, they are keyed and they'll drop on down. There we go. Uh, the props are on and all we need are the lock nuts. Black ones are backwards. And the silvers are what you would think a conventional uh, uh, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Just got a tool and we will go ahead and tighten those up. Okay, there we go. Our Quantum Nova is mechanically ready to fly. We've got it all set up in the transmitter. Let's give it a go and see how she works out. All right, so props are on, we're all dialed in. We checked the software, made sure everything was going the right way. Let's go ahead and pop a battery in it and see how she flies. Now, when you plug in the battery, you want to just leave the, uh, the multicopter alone and to the lights arm and, uh, and what that's doing is uh, basically getting your level and letting the accelerometers calm down and calibrate. So we've got the lights on on that. We're all set. I'm going to go ahead and finish putting the battery in. Close up the door. I already had my transmitter on so I'll go ahead and arm it and we'll see if it works. All right, ready? All right, I'll go ahead and take a step back and let's see what happens. All right, I think this thing is ready to take outside and have some fun with it. Always subscribe to your YouTube channel. We will see you next time.